Merry Christmas, everybody. What neat writing you have, Paul. Thank you very much indeed for your Christmas card. Very kind. Paul, Jackie, Millie, Clark and Daisy. There's some cats sprinkled in with that card greeting. Thank you. I shall put that up with, well, all the ones i got behind me on the shelf. There's almost no shelf space left. Too many cards. It's Malcolm Boyden, it's BBC Hereford and Worcester. Hang on a minute, I've just got, just got to finish off my cards, actually, Paul. There's one left to do. Dear Gaffer, please spare Posh and Stu. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm too generous. I know also that I've missed the last posting day for Christmas and I could have sent an email, but anyway, where's the festive cheer in that? Plus, he's only upstairs, the Gaffer. He won't mind. I hope my plea comes off. New research from Royal Mail proves you can't beat... The warm glow, the feeling of having a traditional Christmas card drop through the letterbox during the festive season. We're going to do that story now. We're going to tell you this as well. Over a billion have been sent in 2016. Now, Sharon Little is the chief executive of the Greetings Card Association. What a nice job to have. I've been speaking to Sharon and I asked her to give us the story. The story of the Christmas card. Well, uh, the Christmas card was invented in 1843 by Sir Henry Cole. Mm. Now, he was a very eminent Victorian. He had his finger in lots of different pies. He was the founder of the Victoria and Albert Museum, uh, the Penny Post with Sir Roland Hill, um, all sorts of other things. The Great Exhibition with Prince Albert. And uh, in 1843, he forgot, well, he didn't forget, but he didn't leave quite enough time to send all of his Christmas letters. Oh. So he commissioned his friend, the artist Sir John Hall, to design a card, which uh, he had printed, and then a lot of them were hand-coloured because they didn't have colour printing in those days. He printed off a thousand of them, he sent um, a load of them, and then he also sold the remainder in his shop in Bond Street. Now, they caused a little bit of a furore because uh, the central panel is him round the Christmas table, so it wasn't a religious card at all. Uh, they're sitting round the Christmas table and one of the children is drinking wine. Ooh, I say. Ooh. Uh, so <laughs> this, the Temperance Society didn't like no. this one no. bit, and no. they started demonstrating outside the shop, and I think there was even a riot. So, so the first Christmas card was quite, quite controversial. Yes, I was going to say it was a bit of a dodgy start. <laughs> but look at us now. Are they still as popular, would you say, even in the digital age? We're going to send a billion Christmas cards this year. Goodness. We love cards in this country. In fact, we're the greeting card capital of the world. We send more cards per person than any other nation. And it's a great homegrown industry as well. We produce our own cards here. And we, we lead the world, in fact. We export millions of cards. So the rest of the world is lagging behind on the Christmas card front. We're leading the way, are we? We're, we're leading the way not only with Christmas cards, but with cards for every other occasion. Oh. We, we are the centre of greeting card design in this country. And of course, at Christmas time, it's not just about sending a card. You can help a charity by sending a Christmas card, can't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. £50 million pounds a year are raised for charities through the sale of charity Christmas cards. And they're just a really lovely way of reaching out to people, especially people who you don't see very often. Uh, I think there's something really special about handwriting. We don't yeah. see handwriting very often these days. We don't write letters to each other no. so much anymore, although there is a resurgence in social stationery. But handwriting is, is quite special, I think. It's unique to everybody. No, but no person's handwriting is the same as anyone else's. And also it has an emotional connection. So, so when we, we know our parents' handwriting, we know our close relations' handwriting, and they will have seen our handwriting develop through childhood and into adulthood. And our handwriting changes as well as we, as we grow older. And it also changes according to what mood we're in. Oh, does it? It really does. Don't you know? Do you... <laughs> I didn't know that. I notice no. that my handwriting changes all the time. Sometimes Ooh. it's really nice and smooth and sometimes it's really not mm. very good at all. What's it like being the chief executive of the Greetings Card Association? I love it, Malcolm. It's tell. a fantastic industry. It's all about it's all about communicating love and caring. I can't see any downside to sending someone a card. It makes people feel really, really special. In fact, there's scientific research which has shown that uh, 
that a card, receiving a card produces an amazing emotional response in the brain a far greater response than receiving texts or emails or other kinds of communication that's been tapped into a keyboard uh, it, it really the, the brain lights up with happy, happy um, feelings and those happy feelings stay because because a card is, is, is there, it's a physical thing, it's something that people love to display, so when, when people have all of their Christmas cards around them each of those cards it shows that somebody's spent the time to 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 write that card and to send it and and they're showing their caring in that way right young sharon you're going to be very very pleased and proud with me and this <laughs> show shall i tell you why oh tell me welcome this year we created our own christmas card and sent it to our listeners Oh, that's lovely. Yes. How many did you send? We sent, we made a limited edition of 50, but um, they were so popular that we had to do an extended run. So that says something about the card, doesn't it? There we go. And do you want to know something else? Oh, yes. It was the world's first ever flat pack Christmas card. <laughs> so you had to make it yourself by cutting it out and gluing the white bit onto the white bit. There was a little fairy for the top because it was Christmas tree or pyramid shaped. And we even sent out a sheet of flat pack tools to help. That's fantastic. I love it. Do you love May it? I have one. <laughs> oh, yes. Do you think it'll catch on the flat pack Christmas card? Oh, car? yes. That mm. sounds great. Oh, good. So there we are. We're at the forefront of Christmas card giving in the radio world. How's that? Fantastic. I'm really proud of you, Malcolm. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> and, of course, the thing is you never stop in the greetings card game because it'll be Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, as soon as the Christmas cards have gone, and I haven't even mentioned birthday, Father's Day yet, and Easter. Absolutely. So we call, um, we, we have what are known as the spring seasons. That's Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day and Easter. And I'd be very, very happy to come back and chat to you about those occasions because they're all really interesting. We're already uh, working on our Mother's Day <laughs> flat pack Christmas. Oh, <laughs> our amazing. Mother's Day flat pack card. <laughs> 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 Listen, Sharon, it's lovely to speak to you. Have a very Merry Christmas and, uh, well, I'm glad we're sending cards. Thank you very much, Malcolm. I'm, I'm, I think it's absolutely brilliant. So do I. She was nice, wasn't she? Sharon Little, Chief Executive of the Greetings Card Association.